Welcome back to my channel guys. My name is Raggy Rog and today I am bringing you the next part of an ongoing series in which I list off and detail and explain my six favorite Pokemon from every unique gen in the Pokemon series. So in today's episode we are going to be looking at Gen 6, that is to say Pokemon X and Y and all of the Pokemon that came from that series. So Pokemon X and Y I actually love it quite a bit. I hadn't really played any of the Pokemon games too seriously until X and Y came out. And I think part of that has to do with how good a lot of the Pokemon were in that game. I was talking with a friend not that long ago, and we both agreed that pretty much every Pokemon that was introduced in Gen 6, or at least their final evolved form, has great utility in the competitive scene and are just well-designed Pokemon overall. I think in the case for a lot of people, Gen 6 kind of revitalized a lot of the love that people just had for Pokemon. So without further ado, getting into it, we're just gonna go in no particular order for no particular reason, my six favorite Pokemon from X and Y. So starting off this list, I'm going to lead with Aegislash. So Aegislash, I'm pretty sure like Everyone I know who played through X and Y used an Aegislash, or they started with a Hone Edge and ultimately ended up with one of the best Pokemon in the entire game. He is just a really clever design, like a, a haunted sword and shield. He, like, it's, it's funny because his, uh, like, thematically, I guess he would have made more sense in Pokemon Sword and Shield. But he's not from that game. Am I basic? Maybe. It doesn't matter. In any case, Aegislash has some of the best base stats in the game. He has some of the best unique moves in the game, including King Shield, which is so useful. His typical build competitively is pretty predictable, but he's still really useful. Like that's how good he is, is you can bring a stock standard Aegislash for for an OU battle. They're going to know what you're using him for exactly, and it's not going to help them any. Apart from that, design-wise, I think he's great. I didn't see him in the anime. He is kind of silly after a fashion, the way he holds onto his sword with like his weird ribbon hands or whatever they're supposed to be. But we forgive it because he's just so useful, and it's a cool idea as well. I, apart from, I think it's Zaxion, maybe? I Don't ask me which of the two. He's the only Pokemon I can think of who actually features a sword. So that's just awesome right out of the gate. Next on this list, we have one of my favorite, favorite Pokemon just in general is Dragalge. So if you know anything about me, you'll know that I kind of have an affinity for like weird ocean life, whether it be like deep ocean fish from like where light doesn't touch or just like cool stuff that you'll find in like a surface level like reef. They are cool and unique and interesting and Dragalge just like fills that niche for me so well. It helps that he's a dragon type. Like I find in my experience finding dragon type Pokemon relatively early in your playthrough of any game it's kind of rare. So Dragalge is a really pleasant departure from that. Apart from that he is competitively viable, I will say. He's not like the be-all, end-all of competitively used Pokemon, but his special defense is very high, and that makes him very, very useful as well, especially with that dragon typing. Apart from that, I just love Deep Ocean Life. He fits that theme so perfectly, and he was in my team as soon as I got him. No questions asked. I was really glad that I got Y, because if I had picked out X, I'd have been stuck with Cloitzer, who is not as interesting to me, but there you go. Next on this list, I have chosen Chestnut. Now, this is going to be the same as pretty much every other starter in every video that I've made so far, is that he is just the Pokemon that I chose at the start of the game. I chose Chespin, ultimately ended up with Chestnut, but the interesting thing is I feel that across the community, Chestnut is widely considered to be the weak choice. There's nothing wrong with him. Rather, Greninja and Delphox are just a lot more popular, and I can see why, because they are 
awesome. Like every Pokemon that came from X and Y pretty much was just a genius idea for a Pokemon. And Chestnut is no exception, but I guess people just preferred the Ninja Frog and they preferred the Witch Fox. No, no one appreciates the tank, unfortunately. And that was the interesting thing about that trio too, is like every starter trio is based on some theme. And the theme in this game was like RPG archetypes. So, and that's why Delphox was a spellcaster and Greninja was a rogue type class. And then you have Chestnut who fit the bill of a warrior slash tank. And that's always how I've played as well. So I guess it was just a match made in heaven. But I like Chestnut. I think he's grossly underused for how good he can be because similar to like Aegislash, he has some unique moves that only he gets. Some pr that might have changed since, since X and Y, but he's got great utility. He's got his niche and I don't think he's as predictable as some others. So I really like Chestnut and I'm going to use him again if I ever find an excuse to do so. Next on this list, we have Talonflame. Now, the deal with Talonflame, I didn't actually use him throughout Pokemon X and Y. I think I I think I started with a with a Fletchling. I might have evolved it into Flitchinder, but by the time you get to Lumio City and they give you a Charmander, well, I already explained that I had already chosen Chestnut. I didn't. I wasn't like really locked into using a fire type, so they offered me Charmander, who was one of my favorite Pokemon. Of course I picked Charmander. Ultimately it was I knew I was gonna end up with Charizard, so I guess I'll I guess I'll skip Talonflame in this round. But in the competitive scene, Talonflame is widely considered to be just a superior option to Charizard, if you're not taking Gigantamax or Mega Evolutions into consideration. But Talonflame definitely is like OU tier, and he's got so much utility, not just in battle, but in just how you play the game. In X and Y, traversing the world had not been refined like how it is currently in Sword and Shield or the Diamond and Pearl remakes. So you still needed to teach your Pokemon moves like Fly in order to get from place to place. And that made Talonflame exceptionally useful because if you were breeding Pokemon, if you were c competing in like competitions and trying to breed the perfect Pokemon, then Talonflame doubled up as being someone who could get you from place to place quickly with Fly, but he also has the Flame Body ability, which means that any eggs in the party while he's in the party as well take half as many steps to hatch. He was so useful. I like. I may not have used one competitively, but I definitely carried one around with me a lot, especially during the post game. So for that reason, Talonflame just has to be on this list. Next on this list, I've also chosen Floette. Now, most people I think picking any Pokemon from this line are probably going to go if it's evolved form Florges, but I. It's hard to explain. I never really used one competitively, any of them, but aesthetically, I think Floet is just like a perfect design. It it plays on the original design of what Flabebe looks like. It clearly comes from that source. Florges is a bit of a departure, and there's nothing wrong with its design outside of the fact that it could actually just be a completely different Pokemon from Flabebe and Floet. But aesthetically, I think it just fills its role perfectly. And if I had to use one competitively, I'm pretty sure that Floet isn't a half bad Evolite user. So I could be wrong about that. If you want to go ahead and correct me on something like that, then go ahead. I am by no means a Pokemon expert, but I appreciate Floet. And I feel like compared to Florges, it's just a smarter design. So I like Floet. I'm like, would I, would I get a tattoo of Floet? No. Would I buy art of Floet? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would actually. Absolutely. And now the last one on this list, and keep in mind, this is in no particular order. So I haven't saved like the best for last or the worst, but the next on this list is Holucha. So. Interesting thing about Holucha is I remember using one in my playthrough of X and Y, and I remember liking using him, but I also remember replacing him pretty quickly. Don't ask me what I replaced him with. I can't remember. I think I know ultimate, 
Like, I just, I know that by the time I got to the Elite Four in that game, he was not in the party anymore. But I thought Holuch's design was very clever. And I, I have an affinity for Pokemon that just don't evolve and don't come from any pre-evolution, right? I appreciate a standalone evolutionary line, I guess you could call it. But I appreciate that Holucha just stands on his own and is to this day competitively viable. Currently, these days, I am actually toying with the idea of using Holucha a lot more just because he does have a, a solid niche. I know that if you put Sword Stance on him with High Jump Kick, you can potentially just pull off a sweep right at the start of the battle. The, your opponent obviously has to kind of not predict that. Like, it's very... It's hit or miss, right? But it works for me. I like using Holucha. I don't care so much care for... they. Game Freak tried to create this dynamic with Holucha that he had, like, flying-type moves that also did fighting-type damage but weren't classified as fighting-type moves, or vice versa. And it was kind of messy, so I can understand why that hasn't, like, carried over, really. But we do see... With the up-and-coming Scarlet and Violet as well, we see that Pokemon are going to be able to change their type. So who knows how this is going to change things up, if it's going to change their moves as well. It's 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 very up in the air still, but I liked Holucha. Very unique design. He's got his niche in the competitive realm, and I'm just starting to appreciate that about him now. He, he got replaced with other stuff from other gens in my playthrough of X and Y, but... Of the Pokemon that came from X and Y, definitely in my top six for sure. In any case, that is my top six Pokemon from X and Y or Gen 6. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Comment down below which ones you agree with or which ones are just your favorites because I would love to know as well. Let me know if we're like in sync, you know? In any case, if you enjoyed today's content, then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon as well. And then you don't have to miss out on future content either. You'll get instant updates and it's all going to be good. So there. In any case, my name is Ragirog. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Until next time, you have a good one.